drawing in people, places, ways of life and experiences which relate to the frequencies we're putting out. So if you bring this to the, the big, big picture, we are living within an energetic sea. This is the Gradowski of WeAreChange.org here with the one and only David Icke. Last year we had a very interesting conversation. It kind of went viral on the internet where we talked about ayahuasca and DMT and the secrets of the universe. So I think it's only fair to kind of continue that conversation. Okay. And I was wondering, David... Um, oh, by the way, yeah. the last conversation was on a, a dirty wooden bench in, a, in, a, in, a, in this horrible little area, wasn't it? In, yes. in, in, in Watford. This, this scenery this, here. This, yeah. this is a slight improvement, right? A great improvement uh, that David has taken us out here to the Isle of Wight and it's been amazing and beautiful. The weather's also great, which is very rare here for London. But um, spiritually speaking, um, you know, we all go on different paths. Uh, since we last spoke, uh, how is your path? What path are you on now? Well, I'm doing, Luke, what I've always done. Um, which is follow my intuition and just keep putting one foot in front of the other and where it goes, it goes. Uh, you know, all, all you can do is have the intent to do what you want to do, the greatest good you think you can do. And, and trust that that intent will bring towards you what um, you need to do to make it happen. And, you know, there, there are a kind of a lot of myths about spirituality that you know when you become spiritual suddenly your life changes and you're walking down country lanes with you know butterflies fluttering around your head and beautiful colors and you know life's wonderful now because it's I'm spiritual but actually um, one of the things that I was told through a psychic when in uh, 1990 right at the start of my conscious start of this journey was the spiritual road is tough and no one makes it easy yeah. and so uh, there is an, a, 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 another myth that, that the, the awakening means that your life becomes uh, perfect in your view of perfect but actually what awakening means is tearing down the layers of programming and perception that hold you in uh, servitude to ignorance. And so there are many times in my life, and, and they continue, and I'm, I'm sure you've absolutely been through the same, where you have challenges um, and you think, well, what the hell is this all about? Um, but if you look, um, if you look deeper into it, even though it's an experience you might not like, there's a gift waiting once the penny drops because I uh, saw um, uh, a, um, a quote today, funnily enough, um, about your greatest teacher is your last mistake. And so what we call mistakes are just experiences that give us insight, which without experiencing it, we wouldn't get the insight. So, you know, you become a bit blasé about it in the end because you, it, you, you've been on it on the journey for so long and it's like, you know, you're going well, then there's a problem, you've learned from the problem, you go higher. Um, and, and that's what I've always done and that's what I'm doing now. And uh, where it goes is where it will go. Just like Bill Hicks said, life is just a ride. It's, it's an up and down kind of interesting roller coaster. Uh, but personally, uh, one thing I learned uh, from last year is uh, gratitude. Uh, and being grateful for what you have every day now before I go to sleep I write down five things I'm grateful for uh, and really putting out it's really putting out the intention of just being happy with what you already have and if you think about that it kind of brings in more of that into your life as well uh, it's a very interesting kind of understanding interesting kind of paradox but I know intentions uh, and putting your thoughts to something is extremely extremely important we know that it could be used for dark and light uh, but but what is your understanding of, of the power of intention well first of all I there's, there's, there's another uh, uh, quote um, if you're not happy with what you've got you won't be happy with what you want <laughs> if, or if you're not content with what you have you won't be content with what you want because it is a state of being you get these people uh, who, who get up with the, with the sun every morning 
to earn more and more money and by the end of the day they earn more and more money but they're no happier and no more content I mean yeah. so you know it's very true intent I think is um is an extraordinarily powerful energy and actually it comes back to what I was just saying earlier if you put out an intent I want to do this um, well what will happen is because that intent is is a frequency everything is a frequency that intent has its own frequency whatever intent it is and so other frequencies that sync with it will start attaching to it and we call these uh, frequencies these energy fields people places ways of life experiences uh, 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 etc and so when you put out an intent uh, and say um, this is what I want to do this is what I want to achieve well what will come back is what you need to achieve it and and we come back here to um, there'll be fluttering butterflies as I walk down country lanes of beautiful colors because what comes back when you you say that is what you need to achieve the intent and almost every time what is needed to achieve any intent of greater awareness is deprogramming programmed awareness and so what comes towards you is often um, your worst nightmare sometimes uh, anyway and people who are pains in the backside um, people that uh, disrupt your life bring about upheavals and stuff like that and and if you see it in that one-dimensional sense of the experience you start feeling sorry for yourself look I just want to be spiritual and, and I, just, I want to do some good and, and my life's falling apart uh, what's going on well what's going on is what you need to get the insight you want um, you are having the onion skins removed that are keeping you from that understanding because it's not a case of seeking enlightenment we are enlightened that's what we are we are all that is has been and ever can be but um, what the awakening path is is removing all those layers of programming and perception uh, control that are keeping us from that level of ourselves which is enlightened mm -hmm. um, and what experience does I mean wise people take experience and learn from it foolish people take experience don't learn from it and so keep repeating the same things um, what's that line if you always do what you've always done you'll always get what you've always got and uh, so we, I think people kind of need to to cut the crap about spirituality as, as, as if suddenly I, I see this lot of Luke in the new age and the new age um, it's not very nice people in the new age but it, it, it is a massive form of escapism I, I meet so many people in the new age or I have over the years not so much now that um, that are using it as a form of escape so they live this life in which outwardly they are portraying themselves as enlightened and happy and joyous and and oh everything's wonderful because I'm spiritual now but inside they're full of crap yep. um, and, and and it comes to the surface eventually and until that crap and it, it's not kind of condemning everybody everyone's full of crap because we're, 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 we're in a madhouse um, uh, and we've been programmed by a madhouse since we were born here so you know it's not condemnation it's just facing facing facts and and until you recognize the crap um, and remove it then you'll stay full of crap and and that's what intent does you put the intent out okay if you can't achieve your intent while you're full of crap here's some experiences to get rid of the crap and 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 you get these these people come in your life you're horrible why are you doing that to me uh, and at the end of it are you more enlightened well yeah I am yeah I've, I've learned a lot from that well that was the idea that's how it works but we, we judge every experience in and of itself when um, I mean I, I look and I'm sure you'll do the same and I'm sure everyone listening to this will do the same when you look back at what gave you the most in terms of uh, wisdom um, expanded awareness it was something in the moment of experiencing it you didn't like mm, very much so a lot of 
uh, growth for myself came from a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of loss with either my health or personal relationships. Uh, and uh, and I like how you broke it down because there is this perception of, you know, of spirituality as this hippy dippy kind of culture where yeah. people just think positively and everything positively happens and everything's happy go lucky. When in reality, it's about facing your fears, facing your ego, facing your pride, and finding a truest version of yourself where. Uh, you could really uh, act freely uh, and 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 I think that's a very important distinction because it's not all hippy dippy no. uh, but but I think a lot of it also has to do with certain frequencies uh, certain kind of thoughts and patterns that we put out there as well there's there was very interesting scientific experiments done on plants um, you know on, on for an example you know a piece of lettuce was cut by a specific um, scientist and they 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 measured the frequencies and it was it was suffering frequencies it was pain suffering and 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 all living things have these frequencies and i think understanding this kind of realm is very important because these elites these powerful men i feel have grasped it in a, in a certain way they have certain rituals they have their intentions that they put out there uh, meanwhile we talk about it we're deemed crazy and insane and delusional meanwhile the mainstream media who pegs us as this doesn't even talk about the politicians who are actually doing this like in the bohemian grove wearing robes uh, doing sacrifices and and doing all these insane rituals so my, my question leading to this is the importance of, of frequencies and understanding them what what what's your grasp on uh, frequencies well for me fr frequency in the end frequency is everything because everything is a frequency this conversation is a frequency I mean, and if we, were, if we were laying into each other, the conversation would be a different frequency. Everything's a frequency, and frequencies uh, attract frequencies. I, I call it vibrational magnetism. And therefore, what you put out comes back. Um, so when you put out the intent, whatever that intent is, it's represented as a frequency, and, and it draws in frequencies that relate to it. Um, and so uh, we... Uh, at any point in our lives, depending on our state of being, our attitudes, our emotional state, whatever it is, our intent, we are vibrating to particular frequencies, particular frequency band. And that frequency band is going out. It's represented in our, in our auric field. And so we're drawing in people, places, ways of life and experiences which relate to the frequencies we're putting out. So if you bring this to the the big big picture we are living within an energetic sea uh, this can you know you can photograph it now it's um you call it the earth's energy field whatever you like there is not empty space between everything that they are different expressions of an energetic sea and if you want to um affect all the fish at the same time you affect the sea if you want to affect all human beings at the same time you affect the energy sea now when you think that the technological radiation in our energy sea has increased by millions of times in the last 50 years this energetic sea that we are um, speaking in now is dramatically different to what we would have been speaking into 50 in 50 years ago um, and so that's f fundamental f for this reason our energetic fields of what we call people interact with this energetic sea and therefore it's affecting us and it's affecting our state of being and it, our state of being then uh, changes to different frequencies. We attract to us like frequencies to what we're putting out. So it is actually not just about manipulating an energetic uh, earth energy field. It's about manipulating everything within it by what you do to that. And, uh, you know, I came across a document uh, a few years ago, uh, written, uh, it was said, by uh, a, a leading Australian Satanist, um, it, it, as, he, as he, was, he knew he was dying. 
and it wasn't um, a, 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 a like an admission of oh I'm just I'm 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 just saying I'm terrible. I'm, I, it's, it's so I'm so sad that I did it. No, he was actually glorifying it in in, in many ways, but he was explaining how it worked. And one of you know we talked about the, the children and politicians and, and all the stuff. But one of the things he said is that they go to particular points within this energetic sea, um, and a lot of these points are um, are pointed out really by uh, stone circles, standing stones, um, ancient earthworks, often churches, because churches were built on uh, many, many churches were built on old pagan um, ritual sites, um, and thus it, it, the, the church is. On, on one of these vortexes within the energetic sea and he explained how they do rituals at those points repetitively and as they do them and do them and do them and do them it changes the nature of the energetic field it pulls down its frequency now I've been saying for a long long time that this world is ultimately manipulated by entities that operate beyond human sight. Christians call them demons. Um, uh, the uh, Islamic and pre-Islamic world, where it came from, call them jinn. There's many names from around the world. Uh, uh, the, the Gnostics, the ancient Gnostics, called them archons. And it, it makes me smile, um, Luke, you know, when, when Christians kind of condemn me for talking about this stuff and ah, oh, he talks about reptilians he's mad he talks about entities um so um what about these demons in your bible then what, what are they all about you know it, it's written in the books and and these entities are all over the ancient world you see them uh, uh described in almost exactly the same way often exactly the same way using different um different names and they operate in a certain frequency band and Basically, it's a frequency band that is a distortion. It's a bit like a computer virus. You might want to use that analogy. Um, and it's, it, it, th this force is of itself a distortion. And so what they have to do to have control over the target population is to pull the target population into the distortion. And if you look um, at the world, it's not only a distortion, it's, it's a distortion to the point where it's virtually everything's an inversion. Everything's inverted. And so you've got the, the natural order, the natural order of balance is love, kindness, um, caring for each other. The inversion of that is war, conflict, people dying of hunger in a world of plenty. These are all inversions of the natural order um, and so society has been manipulated and continues to be so not least by um, infusing the energetic sea with the distortion to pull people into a distorted state and, and if, you, if you don't understand this then the distortion completely controls your perception for instance um, all around the world, particularly in America uh, at the moment, but it's coming in in many other places, we're having the clearly uh, unfolding police state. We're having the, um, I mean, YouTube is awash with police brutality, not, uh, not least out of America. And um, we're getting more and more um, imposition by uniforms. Now, that's the distortion. It's not the natural order for that to happen, for people to be brutal to each other. That's a distortion. They're expressions of the distortion. But if you then think, well, the only way that we can react against that is by stockpiling weapons and using them if necessary, then you're just another expression of the distortion because that's not part of the natural order either. Killing is not part of the natural order. Making people suffer maiming people. It's not part of the natural order. It's the distortion of the natural order. And whether you're fighting for peace or fighting for um, fascism, it's still part of the distortion. I have this phrase I've used for years. What you fight, you become. And what do you become when you fight? You become an expression of the distortion. And 
because people who think they're awake are so um, programmed by the perception of the world that they can see, which is just a tiny band of frequency, the, the enormity of forever exists beyond that tiny frequency band. And yet from that little sliver of frequency, people think that they can know it all. And if you only see the physical, then the only thing you can think of in terms of meeting what you perceive as a, a physical situation is with another physical situation. So we, if we're going to get out of this, <clears throat> we need to understand that it's about frequency and it's about manipulating human perception, thus human states of frequency, so that we sync with the distortion. And then the distortion's calling the shots. It's, 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 like, it's like tuning a computer into the internet. It's now feeding you information from which you get your perceptions, your reflex action responses about everything. And when you, uh, you, you, you um, are working to get closer to the natural order of balance, of love, of caring, of, of, of seeking what's best for the greater good and not just for the perceived um, success or benefit of you, then you start to move out of the distortion because you're no longer syncing with it in terms of frequency. And at that, th that point, the distortion st stops influencing your perceptions. And as it stops influ influencing your, your perceptions of everything, it allows space for other perceptions to come in, for other insight to come in, because you're now connecting with something that's beyond the distortion and that's the point where you get insight it's where you when you get revelation of, of how things are and of course at that point everyone attached to the distortion says you're mad and crazy and insane because insanity has become because of the distortion insanity has become the norm insanity is perceived as normal and um, therefore, if, if the world doesn't see you as strange, 